Pretty cool guys. Welcome back. This is Eric here with Guitarsenal and today we're doing a amplifier uh, showdown here or showcase rather if you want to call it. This is a Lazy J20 uh, from Jesse Hoff over there at Lazy J Amps over in uh, merry old England. Send me some tea along with the amp list. Okay that's a horrible accent. That's so bad. That's not even nearly passable. Uh, but he's putting together these really awesome point-to-point -point wired Basically, kind of like a really, really well-made and true to the original Fender Deluxe. Uh, he hand-builds all the cabinets, all the tweed he does himself on all the cabinets. So everything's, you know, handmade. They're all hand-wired, really high quality. Uh, hopefully, I demonstrated some somewhat usable sounds out of it there. Um, and yes, we are picking up microphonics because we got distortions and things going on. Um, yeah, really cool amp. So basically you've just got, just like a, a standard kind of Fender Deluxe, old school tweed amp, you've got two sets of inputs, a high and a low, normal and a bright. Uh, we're running in the bright, and you have two different volumes. Now on the old school Deluxes and styles of amp, and we are going to try this amp with some different guitars. That was a Stratocaster, but we'll run some other stuff too. Um, you used to have to jump the inputs over in order for the uh, controls to be interactive with each other, but on Jesse's design, uh, you don't have to worry about that. You can run any input you want and the controls are still interactive with each other. There's also some improvements that, I say improvements, but some, let's call it modern enhancements to the original design that he's done as well, uh, which is basically offering a, not only are the channels still interactive with each other without having to be jumped, there's also the tone pot has a push pull mid boost. So that's kind of nice. If you want some extra mids, you can pull the, the top hat up and you get a, a mid boost. And then also there's a, a variable attenuator control over here, which allows you to dial. I think I read the amp dials down to like three watts. So you can crank the amp and then dial it down. Okay. In addition to that, if, as if that's not cool enough, another thing that he offers in a nondescript way, you don't see it from the top of the amp or, or anywhere like that. On the inside of the amp, he mounts um, valve driven trim and reverb. Okay. Uh, so really cool. So let's, uh, let's go through a few of the sounds and hopefully, uh, so I've got the volume right here on four. Uh, volume two, I normally run it about halfway up and I've got the tone pretty much halfway up. So this is the amp. Uh, I would say at its lowest usable setting. This sucker is loud, and we probably will crank it as well. But, uh. All right, let's listen to the trim. Thank you. 
utilizing uh, the reverb. This is completely dry. Such a warm sounding amp with the reverb. A little bit more. When you dig in with a pick, this amplifier really responds to varying changes of the signal from your guitar, whether you're using touch sensitive style of playing, where if I just want to. Whatever. Then you can really dig in with the, with the pick. Really responds to that. Now, obviously, we can get this thing in nuclear territory if we want in terms of cranking it, but because we have limitations of the room we're in, we don't want it to sound flat and flubby or weird. What we can do is I'll just lower the volume on the guitar. We'll crank it. Woo! But we'll turn the vac switch on. All right. So once the, the vac switch is snapped in place and engages, if I leave it just barely into the position, it'll be at full volume. It won't attenuate until we dial it down. So let's dial it down and let's just kiss it up about an eighth of a turn. This should be the amplifier roughly in a cranked mm, four or five watt setting, maybe less, might even be less. So let's give that a listen. That's awesome. And it still retains that nice kind of crazy crunch, but at a reduced volume. As we reduce the vac down to its original position, the amp will get louder and will still maintain the breakup characteristic because it's cranked. It's still cranked regardless of the, the volume we're bringing in. That's about a cranked seven or eight watt amp right there, okay? Let's give that a listen. And we are gonna play a Telecaster and a guitar with humbuckers as well. Yeah, <laughs> I love just uh, hammering on that kind of stuff, just having fun. That's awesome. Let's add a splash of delay and just hear how this neck pickup sounds. Have a little fun here.
tell you what, I'm going to turn the vac off, but before I do so, I'll just go ahead and turn the amp down. The amp doesn't have standby. And I'm going to turn the vac off all the way. So now the amp's kind of deadlined a bit. Now, this cable that I have allows me to switch guitars easily. This is a Mogami with the Nutrix silent jack. Okay, that allows me to switch guitars without any pop. It'll only pop if this little, little guy right here is pressed down. That allows me to switch guitars easily. Let's switch to a Telecaster. But I tricked y'all. I'm not going to grab just any Telecaster. I'm going to grab a Telecaster with freaking humbuckers in it. All right. Now, let's put the amp on four again and on six again. And everything is set the way that we had the Stratocaster running into it. But listen to the way that this thing is going to respond to these humbuckers. <laughs> So definitely pushes the front end of this thing a lot harder. I think you guys can see that. That's with the tone dialed out a good bit too. These lazies, just like the original Fender Deluxes and, and other Tweed amps, they really are just like a fuzz box with, the, with a speaker attached to them, okay? They're almost an effect in of themselves, the way they really respond to the output of the guitar and your picking dynamics. <laughs> We're going to dial that reverb down. It's a little powerful when you really push it hard. All right, now we'll engage the vac and have a little bit of fun with the telly. Sorry for the sloppy playing, guys. I'm mainly just trying to demo the way this thing sounds. You can take the vac, turn it on, turn it all the way down to the lowest wattage setting, then crank it, and that way you're not getting any noise. Notice that way we didn't have a lot of noise. If I turn this down, you're going to hear... That's the amp cranked. That's the ambient level that the amplifier is going to have when it's completely cranked. We're not getting into that territory. The thing's going to peel the paint off the walls. But, without peeling the paint off the walls, we can get the vac down to about, I think this is like two or three watts. We'll see how this sounds, ladies and germs. Sorry about that, y'all. I bend a lot, so the strings go out of tune sometimes. Let's get that a little bit louder and engage a splash of delay and have a little fun with that. Sounds a little bit farty when you're trying to really push this thing hard with humbuckers. 
at the really low volumes, let's try getting the vac turned up a little hotter. Get a little bit more output, let that speaker really work a bit. I'm digging in pretty hard there, sorry for the sloppy playing, but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea. That's the tone halfway up as well. Let's increase the tone all the way. This is the amp completely dimed, and the vac control roughly about 40% of the way uh, on, I guess you would call it. Definitely got some honk and output with this telly with the humbuckers in it. Cool. Hopefully cool. All right. And real quick, I'm just going to turn the amplifier uh, vac off and we're gonna set the amp to about four and straight up like we had it uh, EQ'd for the Strat. And I'm gonna demonstrate with the tone roughly halfway up like we had it before, the difference in the mid boost and hopefully you can hear it a bit. This is gonna be kind of loud um, because this is such a, an amount of output coming through here. <laughs> With the mid boost. Without. With the mid boost. Not bad. Um, thing is, it's not an amp for everybody. It really depends. Uh, the, the, what drove me to this amplifier, what made me want this, was the fact that they're handmade, they're hand wired, they're point to point wired, they're really well made, obviously. And Jesse stands behind his work, he's a good guy. I wanted the vac control because I wanted to be able to get the kind of really good grind sound at studio levels and potentially at gig levels. So that was one thing that I wanted out of it. So the VAC control sold me on it, and the fact that you didn't really have to bridge a channel sold me on it. I love the sound of the amplifier. Uh, it's just such a wonderful setup. The way that he really takes a lot of care building these cabinets and just the coverings, you can tell he really cares about his work and, and everything. And I just really love the old school uh, tweed fender sound, but I didn't really want to get into an amp that would be um, you know, some rare or valuable component that would be hard to find or hard to get. Uh, Jesse really um, makes these things real foolproof 
and easy to mess with. So I wanted modern reliability, but with a vintage tweed kind of sound. And uh, it really nails the tweed sound quite well. Uh, I know my playing was a little sloppy in this video. Uh, I apologize for the sloppiness, but it's a great amp to just kind of go for it and get into nuclear level. Um, this is a great kind of like Neil Young amp, or if you're, if you're getting into anything where you need a bit of grind, uh, it's not a good clean platform. The cleans are definitely on the crunchy side, and it's going to get clean at low volumes, but it's, this is really one of those amps that you want to plug a you know, guitar with humbuckers, or uh, you can probably get some respectable tones with a Strat or a Tele like we demonstrated before, um, but you're going to have to watch that pick attack, because the minute you dig in, this thing is just going to start grinding. Uh, that's what it made, uh, it's definitely made to do. The Tweed amps respond so well to picking dynamics and to playing dynamics. So we hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully we did the amp some justice. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing it. Uh, I love this amp. It's great. Uh, it's, just, it's loud. I will tell you that. 20 watts. Don't let it fool you. This sucker is stupid loud. And I think it's the efficiency of the speaker combined with the way the cabinet's made. It's very resonant. Not to mention, you know, the way that the amp is built, point-to-point -point wired. It, it's just a loud dang amp. So it's going to surprise you. If, if you've never played through one, you turn that volume up to about two or three, and it's like, whoa, you start to get into kind of nuclear territory pretty quick. So, guys, thank you for watching today's video. We post every Monday and Friday here on Guitar Arsenal. Make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're getting our videos. Uh, we really enjoy making them. Thank you very much for watching today's video, and we'll see you all next time. All right, let's get that VAT control about 75% of the way up, and let's crank this sucker, take her home here. Whew, it's going to be loud.